Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for free premium sports picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, for me, um, whether I'm right or wrong, just in terms of approach, for me, a lot of betting is like math, right? A lot of handicapping fights is like math. You see what the guy can do. You see what the guy can't do. You think about what his opponent can do. You think about what answers, if any, his opponent would have to certain strategies. And then you make a decision based on what they can do in the ring. While I enjoy the theater of pre-fight hype, I've learned uh, not to take too seriously what the fighters say. I try not even to find out that much about their personalities, right? I want my analysis to really be limited to what they do in the ring. But occasionally, personalities do come into play, right? Occasionally, you look at styles and then you ask yourself, wow, you know, what emotional dynamic is there going to be in the ring? Right? We're all amateur profilers to some extent. We all reach conclusions on people we meet. Let me talk about this Carl Frotch, George Groves fight, and let me throw in another British super middleweight, James DeGale. Now, to me, the personalities of the men are different. Right? I believe Carl Froch is the man at the bar, right? I think he's the guy who's the most socially conversant of these three men, right? James DeGale is arrogant, he's abrasive, in general he's unlikable. Let's be real, I'm not here to pull the punch, right? I believe with the Gale, there's a wall between himself and the public that would make it hard for him to actually be liked in a bar. Now with George Groves, I believe Groves has the most fan-friendly corporate persona, but I think that persona is untrue. Right, I think underneath it all, George Groves has a deep-seated feeling that he's better than everyone else. Right, now let me back up a bit before I go further. I know the video is going to sound cruel and mean-spirited, but let me back up a little bit. I believe uh, there's a gap between our public personas and who we are privately. Right? You see it in politics all the time. Someone looks great giving a speech, looks committed, is talking about causes, right? Looks like he has the picture perfect family life, the loving spouse, etc. But if he's, I'm in America, I'll talk about an American politician. If he's John Edwards, right, who I thought was a rising star in American politics, you then start to find out that he's not who you thought he was. That privately, he's not faithful to his wife. Right? You uh, start to realize that this well-manicured and home public image isn't who the man is at all. That he's been lying to the public as well as his spouse. Now don't get me wrong, I believe that some philanderers have made some of the best presidents in American history. Right? I consider myself a Kennedy man and I wasn't even alive during the Kennedy administration. But the point is, sometimes there's a gap between public persona and who the man is privately. Now, I believe one of the secrets in life, right? is knowing your limitations. 
regardless of what your public persona is. Right? I believe Frotch Groves really is analogous to Leonard Duran. The first two fights. We'll forget about that third fight. Right? The first two Leonard Duran fights. I believe that the first fight was an eye-opener for Sugar Ray Leonard, who went into that fight unbeaten. Right? I think Leonard was humbled in the ring. I think he slowly realized over the 15 rounds that he was no match for Duran inside. Right? At times he held his own, but Duran was just the better chess player. Understand, boxing has many parts. One of it is playing chess. Another is athleticism, right? I think Roy Jones showed us you don't have to stay at the chessboard. Well, Ray Leonard in that first fight tried to stay at the chessboard, and he got outplayed. I also think Ray Leonard at that point was a media darling. People swooned at him. He was a U.S. Olympian. He had won the gold medal in the Olympics. He had beaten big-time names leading into the Duran fight, right? He'd beaten Wilfred Benitez, for example, right? Ray Leonard was the man who was supposed to rule the roost for years. So Roberto Duran disrespected him for the fight. I think it mentally messed up Ray Leonard. Ray Leonard talks about it to this day. How Duran, you know, criticized Ray's wife, called Ray a punk, all this other stuff, right? Duran's point was simply, you're a nobody. Now to a guy who feels that the world owes him nothing, who's not expecting the bright lights. There are people like this in boxing, by the way. Um, Duran would have been just another opponent. You want to talk about my family, you want to talk about me, you want to, you know, uh, criticize me, I couldn't care less, right? That would be the attitude. But you do have sensitive people in boxing. Think Joe Fraser, who was severely emotionally hurt by Ali's taunts, who actually got affected by the taunts. I believe Ray Leonard was affected by the taunts. Understand, the situation between himself and Duran was personal. So Ray loses the first fight. I don't think Ray understood who he was going into the first fight. Ray wasn't an inside fighter then. They come out for the second fight and Leonard understood that he could not fight inside with Duran. He understood that Duran was just tougher than him inside. So the second fight, Leonard uses his legs, moves around the ring. He also understands that Duran's a bully. That if he embarrassed Duran, Duran might fall apart. That's exactly what happened. The second fight is the no mouse bo uh, box fight. And of course, now we're hearing that Duran never said no mouse in the ring, right? If you look at the last round of that fight, it's fascinating. Duran clearly is waving his hands. He doesn't want to continue. Understand, it's a big hit to Duran's image to think that he would quit in any fight because that's his public persona. Right now, the question I have for Frotch Groves is whether George Groves understands that even though he's faster than Carl Frotch, even though he's the better athlete at the start of the fight than Carl Frotch, even if Carl Frotch can't land his jab on Groves early in a fight, he can't. Look at the first fight. We now have Phil, right? Even though Groves has the clear upper hand at the start of the fight, the question is whether Groves himself has doubts about his own chin and whether Groves realizes that if he stays in the trenches, he could lose this fight in the middle to late rounds. Right? The fight to me comes down to George Groves' legs. Right? Ray Leonard 
understood that he had to use his in the rematch to beat Roberto Duran. Does George Groves understand that he needs to use his in his rematch to beat Carl Frotch? Now I've listened to some of the pre-fight talk and stuff. Pre-fight talk doesn't really move the needle that much for me, right? I don't like some of the stuff I'm hearing from the Groves camp, right? And the problem is, I know that Carl Frotch is a different personality type. I believe Carl Frotch is very self-aware. I believe he's more self-aware than George Groves is, right? Keep in mind, Carl Frotch is a bit older. I think Carl Frotch knows that he lacks the hand speed and the foot speed of a Jermaine Taylor early in fights. That's why when he fought Taylor, he gave away the early rounds, right? Frotch knows he's not great out of the blocks. I know in interviews he's talking about, oh, remember me against Lucien Boutte and stuff like that. Frotch has had some early knockouts, but go back and look at that Boutte film again. You're going to see that Frotch paces himself. He doesn't just come out and jump on Boutte. He waits until he hits Boutte with some crisp shots before he steps in. Right? Carl Frotch understands that there's some opponents who are going to be better athletes than him. In fact, Frotch at his best actually talks openly about how at times in his career when he had doubts about his ability, his corner, guys like Robert McCracken, gave him confidence, talked with him about boxing strategy. For all the swag that Carl Frotch has in public, this is a guy who needs reassurance in private. Right? Let me just say this about James DeGale, just food for thought. For all the arrogance, for all the audacity, and let me just point out, I love DeGale. I don't have a problem with audacity, trust me. <laughs> but, you know, James DeGale openly admits to having depression. He openly admits to periods of self-doubt where he thinks about ending his career, right? Understand, people with depression know their limitations more than you think, right? Now, George Groves, unfortunately, in my opinion, as I said before, believes he's better than everyone else. And for the first few rounds against someone like Carl Frotch, he is going to be better. I think Groves is more talented than Frotch. If Groves shows up with his A game, I believe Groves wins the fight. Let's be as clear as possible. But, like Ray Leonard in the rematch, Groves is going to have to show some strategy. He's going to have to show a recognition that Carl Frotch does better in fights the more they progress. That Carl Frotch can knock him out. Right? That Carl Frotch was close to knocking him out the first time when the ref stepped in. I thought the scoring in the first fight was ridiculous. I thought Groves was controlling that fight. I thought the scorecards were too close. But understand, whatever you thought about the scorecards, George Groves is wilting in that round isn't he? Right? Carl Frotch has been in prolonged shootouts where he's had to roll up his sleeves late in fights. Has George Groves faced the same level of opposition? Right? Has he been through such trials and tribulations? With George Groves, it's really a question of in terms of his views, is it confidence or is it self-delusion, right? If Groves is aware 
if he comes in and decides to use his legs like he did against James DeGale, if he's cognizant of the fact that, quite frankly, his chin is not the best in the division, that there are open questions about his chin, right? If he realizes that, and I know he's unbeaten in his mind, if he realizes that he can be beaten, Right? If he privately has some self-doubt and understands he needs to use and leverage all of the advantages he has over Carl Frotch, then he should win this fight and he should do so by dancing the second half of the fight. He has to come in, if he wants to make a statement early, if he wants to hurt Carl Frotch early, go ahead and do that. But then back away. Right, the hand speed advantage that he has over Frotch is only going to last for about four or five rounds. I know that sounds ridiculous, but that's the way the world is. Right, it's only going to last for four or five rounds. Right, pretty soon Frotch is going to get in a rhythm. When he does, George Groves would be a fool to continue to engage him. At that point, he needs to just stand back, showboat a bit for the fans showboat a bit for the judges. He needs to flash hand speed. He needs to circle call Frotch. He can't fight him. There are going to be moments where Frotch, like Duran in the rematch, motions to him. Come fight me. Come fight me. At that point, Groves has to tuck his machismo in his pocket and he needs to continue to shoot a jab and just go about winning rounds. The goal here is to leave the ring with Frotch's title. Right? You do that, with all due respect to Timothy Bradley, you do that by winning fights. Right? Not by foolishly going for a knockout and trying to make a statement. Your statement isn't getting the W. Right? It's not in trying to close the show against an opponent who's going to be dangerous for all 12 rounds, right? So as you look at the fight early, just look at whether Carl Frotch is landing his jab. I don't think he'll be able to for at least three rounds. Then you need to look at Groves' feet. Is he using them? Is he dancing around the ring like Ray Leonard danced around the ring against Duran? Trust me when I say I know Carl Frotch is not going to quit in this fight. There's not going to be a moment where Carl Frotch says no moss. So Groves has to be prepared to go all 12 rounds. His persona is great. Behind the scenes, I think he's a bit of a narcissist. I believe that's why he's rubbed both Frotch and DeGale the wrong way. Let me just point out. One of the best things to happen to Floyd Mayweather, another guy who strongly believes in himself. Right? One of the best things to happen to him is that he's had brittle hands. He's had some hand concerns. So he has had to face the reality that there might be a fight where he hurts his hands and he can't be himself in the second half of a fight. In other words, even Floyd Mayweather has had to come to grips with his own mortality. Right? Against Canelo, he hurt his hands. Look at the post-fight interviews of Floyd. He hurt his hands. The last few rounds, he didn't have the hands to do the kind of damage he wanted to do. Now, he still beat Canelo by a mile, but understand what the brittle hands has done is it's reminded Floyd that he needs to prepare to go all 12 rounds. You see these all-access shows with Floyd Mayweather, and he's training harder than his opponents. Whatever gifts God has given him, he understands that he could get hurt in the ring. His hands have betrayed him in the ring. Let me tell you, I met Andre Ward, another guy at 168. You know what they say, never meet your idols. But this was an interesting one for me. Right? I met Andre Ward. I spoke with Andre Ward. 
I went to the airport. I had a flight on Southwest, right? Andre was going back to the Bay Area too. He had a flight on Southwest. You know, Andre Ward did not have an entourage. There wasn't a single person around him. People were walking out to him and Andre Ward was talking to them. There was no sense of entitlement. I know this sounds ridiculous, but I'm just here to tell you, understand that Andre Ward believes deeply in God. And I believe Andre believes, and keep in mind, fighters have egos. There's no question about it. I believe Andre believes that God has blessed him with great ability. So for Ward, boxing is really a means to do God's work, right? Andre calls himself, used to call himself at least, in the ring, the son of God, right? So there is a certain humility and a certain feeling there that, you know, it could all be taken away from him in the blink of an eye, right? Andre believes there are things out there bigger than him, right? Now, keep in mind, I'm more of a man at the bar myself, right? You know, uh, for me, the best part of going to Catholic school, quite frankly, was getting out of Catholic school, right? But when I meet Andre, I respect that. There's a perspective there that's deep. At this stage, I don't believe any of us know whether there's that kind of perspective, that kind of feeling of mortality, that kind of self-awareness with George Groves. Right? I'm not sure if it's there. If George Groves is silly enough to think he can just go toe-to-toe -to -toe and never leave the pocket against Carl Frotch, he could get stopped in this fight. Right? The bet I like is Groves to win hedged with Frotch by KO. By the way, you're getting better than even money on both sides of the play. Right? I don't think Frotch has Groves' talent. I don't. I think the underdog here has more talent. But I don't think Groves has Frotch's level of awareness. Right? If Groves foolishly gets cocky, not confident, but cocky, and decides, like Timothy Bradley did against Manny Pacquiao, that he can close the show by throwing home run balls, right, at, you know, in the fifth and sixth rounds, he probably gets stopped later in fight. But if Groves' new corner is able to reel him in, like Adam Booth did when he fought the Gale, and if he fights the last few rounds of the fight, like he fought against the Gale, Groves should win this fight by a comfortable decision, right? And, of course, Groves does have punching power. I believe it's an open question on who has the bigger punch in this fight. But Groves has to ignore his own punching power, in my opinion, in being a boxer-puncher rather than a puncher-boxer. Right, so that's how I see the fight. I like Gross to win, hedged with Frotch by KO. Let me know what you think. This is my view on May the 27th. The fight is happening later this week. This is a week of the fight video. Let me hear what you think the week of this fight. Let me know if you feel that I'm being too hard on the Saint in saying that I believe he's a bit of a narcissist. Right, much more so, by the way, than either Frotch, who I think is really part of a cult, right? I think his corner has set up a framework where they tell Frotch he's the best, and Frotch, who understands he's not blessed with great hand speed or great foot speed, starts to believe the hype, right? But I believe Frotch and the Gale have more doubts about their ability and have more awareness of their limitations than George Groves does. Tell me your thoughts on that. Tell me your thoughts on this fight. Put it here in the comment section of this video so the world can see them. Thanks for stopping by.